From Boca Raton, Florida, this is Behind the Bima. On this episode, Rabbi Goldberg, joined by co-host Rabbi Philip Moskowitz, Rabbi Josh Brody, and Rabbi Zinio Chavet Goldberg, are joined by Israeli singing sensation Yishai Rebo and his band. In this behind-the-scenes episode, experience the recent Rebo BRS concerts and be inspired by the music and words of wisdom coming from Yishai and his band. All this and more, Behind the Bima. Welcome to Behind the Beam, a very special edition of Behind the Beam, because we had an incredibly special weekend this past weekend, hosting Yishai Rebo and amazing members of his band, each one a gem and a special person in their own right. It was an incredible special weekend, and I really want to begin, even before we tell you a little bit about it and then and share some highlights from the concerts that we had, by acknowledging and thanking Rabbi Moskowitz, none of it would have happened without him. We had this opportunity, it presented itself, it needed such attention to detail and competent management and leadership. Rabbi Moskowitz did that in his inimitable fashion, and we are unbelievably uh, grateful to him for pulling it off, and we are really, really proud. So highlights, Yecheved, Rabbi Brody, we're here together to talk about what it was like. Go ahead, Rabbi well, Brody. Let me ask you, but first of all, does this go down as the best event we've ever hosted? Could be right. Every yes. event becomes the best event. You top, know, we top five. I know. Five, I don't. Three. It's in top five. Okay. We've had top five. Israel, Russia Shiva, right. top politician, Lahavdil politician. We've, you know, Israel rallies. Uh, we've That's done true. Everybody. Everyone we've is done. amazing. Our conversations, uh, Ben Shapiro. We've done unbelievable things with huge audiences. Really? This was big. Like the entire shul was transformed. You know, the the picture of of the stage that was built. Yeah. Out, it was massive. The lighting, the, the stage, of it the, also the lead yeah. up to it. It was so exciting. I right. mean, to get someone like Yishai Rebo to a community is a very unique opportunity. It doesn't happen to everyone everywhere. It's something that and there was there, so to. yeah right. And there was a little bit of a lead up, at least for me. It was, I had a plan where I was davening the whole week before, so I would then not be a stranger to the Sephardic minion. So <laughs> Davin there two cool. weeks in a row. Brody was playing it cool by that. Yeah, I'm always here. A wow, piece I'm always here. Why, why, why are we doing an episode on this and why are we yeah. sharing it with you? Not just because of excitement. We're not flexing that we had Yishai Rebo. But we got to see behind the scenes. You know, Rebo does a lot of concerts. Um, but first of all, it's not just him. It's really the band. And you may not know their names, but we now know their names because we spent the whole weekend, the whole Shabbos with them. And one of the amazing things about this whole band, and it's not by accident, it's by design, is it's really diverse. Religious, non-religious, balei tshuva. It represents the tapestry of the Jewish people. And that comes across in their music and the way they play together and the love and the loyalty they have for one another and the respect. And Yishai himself, for him, it's not about being the superstar. And certainly he's the name in the face. But he he really cares about each of these members. Before the weekend, we already had this conversation. He's like, I want to make sure everyone gets respected. I want to make sure all the members of the band feel comfortable. Those who aren't religious, that on Shabbos, they have a place they can smoke, they can sit outside, they can do their thing. They don't have to come to Shabbos meal or shul. We were like, yeah, absolutely. That's exactly who our community is, loving people where they're at. So we want to share it because we were so moved, not by what you see on stage. And that energy was outrageous. But it's what you don't see on stage. And it was the conversations, the Shabbos meal, tennis match. It was the things that you don't see on stage that people don't get to know. And that's that's what we kind of feel we want to do is bring that to you so you get to know some of these other personalities and the stories they shared with us of who they are, what they represent, and what they've been doing in Israel. Because this band, since October 7th, has done more than 90 concerts on bases in the north and the south in Israel. They've been to hospitals. They've gone to hotels for displaced families. And that's their that's their shlichos. That's their um, contribution to this is boosting morale. And, and we got to hear about that because Ayesha did a conversation on Shabbos afternoon, question and answer. He speaks only French and Hebrew, so we mm-hmm. translated it. Uh, on Shabbos, but he talked about where that came from, what that was like. The first concert they did was a day or two after October 7th to boost morale of soldiers, reservists who had left their wives and children, who were uncertain when they're going in, who had this incredible anxiousness. Yishai said that they found out after that concert that there were still terrorists in the area that hadn't all been caught yet. And that was the first concert where he broke out from Sibat HaSibot into Am Yisrael Chai and, and uh, Am Anetzach. Amanetzach and 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 the Nachum Aminim, and that was spontaneous. That wasn't planned. And and maybe we'll share that video in the middle of this 
episode two because that that went viral and then he based everything off of that and he did that he did that here as well so there's so much i'm excited about i want to hear yeah. from both of you also but the, the weekend was just filled with so much and we want to share that in our raffle winner rabbi brody you put out a little video from the concert which was fantastic <laughs> you can talk to us a little bit about that and uh from everybody's angle so oh highlights God. of this weekend i think I, I think a few things that struck me you've touched upon a little bit but first of all i think that he's a little bit been like one of the faces of this war you know, from the beginning that he's been into those army bases and to the hospitals funeral. and the funerals, that video where he breaks down in the middle of singing Alev Shali at a soldier's funeral, who didn't cry when they watched that. <laughs> I mean, your heart's so connected to him and his music and, and what he means to the Jewish people in Israel. And now he brought it to us in America. And there was someone who actually, you know, gave feedback after the concert. She said that her daughter walked away from that concert feeling like this was the closest she ever felt to how she feels in Israel, you know, because it really was like he extended the Israel experience to us here in Boca, where we felt like now we were part of that, you know, standing for Israel and, and singing and dancing and being a part of that whole big picture of fighting for Israel and being part of this. And I think that was very special. And what also was special to me was to see, I, I didn't realize that musicians travel with the, a band and with all of their technicians and their managers and lighting was, engineer, sound engineer, 10, like 10 people, crew. but they're like a family because yeah. they do this all the time together. So they leave their families, they come together, they travel to the concerts local and when they travel abroad and they're always the same people, the same players, literally. And they really have bonded to the point that they're like family. And, and you see that the way they look out for each other and they're loyal to each other and they compliment and praise each other to the exclusion of themselves. You know, like yeah, Mishai right. was so humble and it was never yeah. about him. It's always about like, and this is my drummer and this is my sound, you know, everyone was like so important to him and such a big part of the whole picture. And you felt that, you felt that feeling when you were with them of how much they really love each other and are loyal to each other. And I thought that was really special and very beautiful. Robert Brody, I yeah. So connecting with uh, one one of his band members, Dekel, the drummer. What was I that connection? That drummer. And I'll tell you, first of all, as one drummer to another drummer, trying to figure out, and you mentioned this a few times, how some of the guys in the band got into the band because they, they sent him a Facebook messenger right. or something. So, I mean, the one question you didn't ask at, at, during the behind the music session on Shabbos afternoon was how does how do, how do I get to, a, to audition? But you know, yeah. Deckel's there and he's he's doing a great job. I told Deckel to watch his back. By the way, Friday night at dinner, I said Deckel. I said one of the rabbis at BRS is a drummer, yeah. and he's gonna like poison your food. No, no. just for one night. He doesn't want to hurt one, you. No, he just take it out for a night. night. And I told him, Rabbi Brody, why don't you share with the audience every concert you go to, Jewish and maybe oh, not yeah. always. What do you do before every concert you go to? They publish the set lists, and I love watching the set lists. So you can, you don't know exactly every song that's going to be played during a concert, but you could narrow it down. You have the set list for, and they put them on the stage, but you can actually see the set lists in advance, or what they assume will be. I listen to every song. I study every song. Bring my pair of drumsticks on the chance that maybe out of the thirty thousand people there, <laughs> the drummer just doesn't show up or he gets sick. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'll hop on stage right now. But but I want to want to just say, Rabbi, because this is so exciting, and you mentioned this so many many times. You know, this is a diverse band, and they very very they come from very different places. But I really do believe that I don't know how many times he spends uh, Shabbos in America, but I think he was very impressed with what the community looks like. It's the yeah. same thing. It's that same same story. And I'm sure you're going to touch on this. I'm, I'm sure you got a long list of notes. But the one thing that just popped in my head as you were talking before was. And you said this in opening number one and opening number two. This wasn't a Yishai Rebo concert. Right. This was not a concert. And I, I'll leave you to elaborate on what everyone who was there had experienced. No, because we also were like, why is it? We're turning our shul upside down, rearranging menu, right. and bringing in security, <laughs> selling tickets, hosting right. thousands of people, selling concessions. What, what, what are we doing? We're a shul. Like, like a go rent, go, go <laughs> right. rent an arena, go rent right. a concert hall. Why are we doing this? And this wasn't us. I mean, we, we were eager and excited to partner 
This is Yishai's vision. And Eli Katz, we got to give a lot of credit. Eli Katz from Israel, Symphonia, who really, you know, we've connected for years. He's personally invited us to different concerts in Israel, trying to establish this relationship and get this going. We've been literally talking about it for years. He made this happen with Rabbi Moskowitz, the two of them. Jeffrey was great. Talia was great. But really, Eli and Rabbi Moskowitz made it happen. Eli gets a lot of credit and a lot of a lot of love. But the vision was they were looking for a shul. This is their fifth trip to America since October 7th. And they're not here for concerts. Certainly, they get paid. It's a, it's a profession. They they make money. This is how they live. It's their, it's their livelihood. But they're trying to create commit connection with community, right? Us and our brothers and sisters in Israel. So it wasn't a concert. It was a rally for Israel. People came with their Israeli flags. They would jump and sing and up and down. This was a, where, where do you get together? Where do Jews get together? In a, in a Beit Knesset. That's where we gather. And where do you daven? In a shul. And where do you rally for Israel? In the community. So this wasn't about some secular venue. This was in a shul because it was all about community. And we were, we we're so proud. Again, this is not about a flex. There are other communities who have hosted Rebo concerts over the last couple of years. And since October 7th, the schools that have done North Shore and Frisch and other places have done it. Not just us. Again, I want to be clear. This is not us thinking that we're different. We're an outlier. We're just sharing our experience. I think what made it different for us is Shabbos. This is the very first time that and, and again, not because he favored us, it worked out this way. He was coming from Panama and before heading back, that instead of going to some hotel or somewhere else, it's the very first time, not he, his crew, his chever, the band, the tzevet, they spent the whole Shabbos in the place they were going to have the concerts. So by the time they got up and played on Sunday, two concerts, five o'clock and eight o'clock, by the time they got up and played, we had a relationship. The community had a connection. They knew right. our we, right. we became part right. of their family. Like we weren't, and, and I want you to know, I've been like, you know, we've all been watching Rebo videos since, since then, it's like, then you're, oh, there's Amir, there's Ami, yeah. and there's Shacham, and there's Davidi. And they were like, we, we know them. We know. It. We used to only always see Rebo. Oh, Rebo, he's the right. one with the mic. And he is, right? You Talented. don't realize. He's a right. poet. Right. He's this right. python. He's amazing. But there, there's there's a family around him. And that's, that's how it felt. The energy on Sunday night was this, we're rallying for Israel. And, and, and Yishai felt that. He ended the night by saying, Boker Raton, I will never forget you for the rest of my life. And he talked about it. He felt that, that that unity and that connection and the diversity of our shul. And he said, you know, I used to go to concerts to bring some of Israel to America, but now I think we got to bring some of America back to Israel because he davened with the Ashkenazim and with our Sephardim and right. members of his band davened in the Shtibel Minyan and with the, and, and the non-religious didn't come to shul and, but came to our meal and until we got home, we're sitting outside and smoking and, and nobody was judging them. And that's all, there's a, there's a comfort and we're all together. And that was the connection between sort of the theme and motto of our community, valuing diversity and celebrating unity and who their band are and what they're trying to get out, that energy. And it really, it came together in such a beautiful way over Shabbos. Well, I'll, I'll add that, you know, I know you're saying that the concert was like an Israel rally, but I think it was also a religious experience. And I know people that walked out of that concert, a teenage girl said to me that she wants to stop listening to secular music after that concert. She felt so inspired and just felt like this is this is what I want to, you know, relate to and, and listen to. And, yeah. and there were a lot of people who walked out of the whole weekend and felt very inspired. He was, he made a bracha and, and he was giving, I love the part when he, uh, one of the band members had his 30th birthday over this yeah. weekend. Amir. It was on Sunday. Amir, the kanun player, he was that, that guy. And uh, what a great guy also. Such a nice, sincere person. And he gave him the most beautiful birthday bracha, saying happy birthday. I, just the whole concert, you felt the heart. connection to, to, to our religion, to our people, to Hashem. To, it was a religious experience. And I'll say when I was when I was walking out, I was talking to one of the band members. He's not a band member. He actually does a sound, but he, um, the lights, I'm sorry. Um, and he's, he was one of the non-religious members of the band who came early, didn't go to shul Friday night, was sitting outside and really nice guy. He was one of the only, one of the only non-religious members who actually stayed throughout the whole Shabbos meal Friday stuff, night yeah. and, uh, and really was like participating in the meal and seemed very, you know, excited, engaged. He enjoyed it. And when he was leaving, I said to him, you know, your concert was amazing and you did such a good job with the lights and it takes such a talent. And, and we were schmoozing. And then he said to me, you know, I love, love this community. I love this Shabbat. And I said, you know, um, he, he said to me, I'm actually from a religion. I said, I, I said, I complimented him. You know, you stayed the whole meal. And it was so nice to have you there. He goes, well, you know, I grew up religious and I wow. used to celebrate Shabbos. And I, I know this well, but I, I've left it, you know, more recently. It's not for me. 
But this Shabbos, I feel now I want to come back a little bit. Like it brought me back. And to hear that from him, from Israel, you know, it's not only it. just to say that he was inspired by this whole weekend, by our community. That was like, again, everyone should be in Israel. <laughs> Israel's the place to be. There's no spirituality. Question. There's everything there. But the fact that this whole experience together with our community, and, you know, the concert, the weekend, the Shabbos, everything, that he was so inspired by it was really very touching. I, I said in introducing both concerts, and I really believe this. Maybe there are others, but when I think of where are Jews of every background, I mean, think about on Shabbos afternoon, we talked to him also, Rebo, about the Washington rally. Who else they could have brought in? What other musician, Reform, conservative, orthodox, non-religious, non-affiliate, Chabad, whoever right. was going to be at that rally in Washington, who could they bring? And it was right. like, an Avi, Yishai Rebo, he's the man. And and there was a lot of controversy over that um the agenda of that rally, 300,000. Because I, I said in the conversation, I said, you know, Yishai, you and I were together also uh, recently. He's like, we were? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> me and you and 300,000 other people. in the, in the You world. don't remember seeing me? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. When Ellie Katz told them, you know, they want you to come in, I think we should do this. He's like, where? He's like, at the mall in Washington. He's like, I'm going to fly in and play in a mall? <laughs> He's like, playing you know, the, next to the know, fountain right you know the mall is in washington it's not like yeah. next to little, the horse you know the the carousel yeah. and the, the carousel mall. right but no the mall in washington three hundred thousand people and and i complimented him because you know the the agenda of that for whatever reasons and no criticism of that rally it didn't have religious content didn't have prayer until yishai Reba was on stage and he embedded in his singing he sang shir lamalos so we said tell him together and then he had three hundred thousand jews responsibly Say Shema Yisrael. Mm -hmm. You know what it means? Jews of every background, every affiliation, maybe Jews who think that they don't even believe we're, we're being the Kabbal, Kabbalos, Omachu, Shemaim together. I don't know when in history 300,000 Jews did that. So Jews stood together on the, right. on, the, on the way into the gas chamber. Jews stood together on the way into, but for Jews to stand together and say Shema, not on their way to their death, but while fighting for life, that was amazing. And he talked a little bit about yeah, what, what made him do that. And he said, yeah. it wasn't my place, but then I felt, you know what? If no one else is going to do it, I'll do it. And I'll just go for it because that's my shlichus through my music, and mm -hmm. and that's why I'm here. So he talked a little bit about that as well. So I said, you know, what are the what what are the places or the people that bring Jews of every background together? Right. That's why we love to go there. The Kotel. You go to the, the oil of the oil the of the oil, Rebbe. Oil, you and I, when we go to New York, right. we go to the oil of the Rebbe because that's like the closest you can get to the Kotel in America. Jews of every background and the Yishai Rebo concert. Right. Those are the three places that Jews of every background are Everyone together. together. You know, and one thing that was not recorded. But unfortunately, uh, no one will ever get to hear now was it happened twice. Rabbi Goldberg got to speak in Hebrew during a class and, and also a drusha. And translate. That was great. And, and translate. translate. What did Yishai Rebo said? It was, it was it the was great. Like, he was interviewing himself because right. he would ask the question, translate his question. People were very question, impressed. Translate his answer. People, was, people were funny. talking. They're like, Rabbi Goldberg really speaks Hebrew. It's I got a lot of work. It needs a lot of work, but I will tell you all there. these trips recently I've been helping. Listen, right. I went to a school that was quasi every I spent two years in Karen Biavna where we had Israeli roommates intentionally. Right. Um, but if you don't keep it up and if you don't talk it, it's so easy to lose. Understand it, yes. I can understand. And that's why translating his answers was easy. The speaking, you gotta conjugate it correctly. Right. You gotta get but all these years of it's learning, tough. of learning Sparim in Hebrew it's has to help us. Yeah, you're right. not like Tana Rabbana on Yishai Ribo. Okay. Right. Like, Hashma no, Yishai Ribo. No, but the Hebrew Sparim. Like, the no, there was one, one or two times, mate, you, you're looking for a word and a Yiddish word came out. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like close <laughs> enough. Yeah, but no, it was, it was, uh, that part was a little stressful, but it was a lot of fun. That's what, great. you know, what else can we share Shabbos afternoon? It was the that... first time that he's done that. He doesn't yeah, go kind of, to a yeah. community and give a class. He's done podcasts, but yeah, but he actually... He, he, he didn't expect that crowd. Yeah, he came in through my office. <laughs> right. And then he looked at it and he goes, whoa. Well, I said, what? He said, I thought it was me and you and like 20 people. So, right. Brody, what do we have to do with him before we went in? So we, had, we might have had one, one quick shot. We had a little Chaim before we went in just to, you know. Well, that's another fun fact about but, this band. They know how to drink. They yeah, how many, oh, my God. We went they, through so many bottles Friday night. Friday night, our meal went until, went until like 12.30 and the drinking. Yeah. I think and the 12 shooting. bottles of Israel. I think we went through all the Israeli wines. It was great. We actually had a great moment. We went around the table and we asked everyone there what their favorite Yishai Rebo song is. Every and member of the band. It wasn't everyone there of, like, yes. Yeah. Uh, it was just people, our right? Yeah. And, and Yishai, he was so cute. He was like so excited about all their to answers. Hear, I, never, right. I didn't know that. Oh, you like that song? And yeah, why? He, no, right. he, he had never bothered knowing from the band, like which right. was their favorite Yishai right. Rebo song. It was really fun. Right. We asked him. We should do that also. Who We could go around to everyone else. Who was your favorite? Who was your favorite guest on behind the beamer oh, there you go. Uh, we've each have our own there we <laughs> go it's right and we talked about also shabbos afternoon how he composes and he talked about 
that, you know, sometimes he described actually it was Friday night. He said, sometimes like, like a baby, like no epidural, it just comes right out. Right. And then other times it's yeah. slow, nine months of gestation. Right. And then you have to give birth to it and then it needs work. And uh, we talked to Abbas after, and what's more important to him, the, the melody or the words. And he said, they're equally important. There are non-Jews who tell him they love his, his songs. Right. They don't understand one word of the Hebrew, right. but the melody moves them. But on the other same, hand, same like most, most to be... similar to most Americans. They yes, don't know no. one word, but but we love it. But here's the contrast. Rabbi Bray, talk about the video that you put out. Well, we had some fun. You know what? We had two two big shows. It was supposed to be one show, and then it sold out so quickly, so they added a second show. So we had everyone was telling us that they're so excited to see Yisha Rebo. So we knew we were going to have time before the concert. People had to get their seats. We knew there would be a, a nice big break between the two concerts. So let's just entertain people. Let's have a little bit of fun. We just want to know two or three things. You love Yishai Rebo, and everyone is so fiercely loyal. We love Yishai. We're here for Yishai. We am Yisrael Chai. Great, great. So just give us one, name one, one song. What's your favorite song? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, unless you're that, under 20, right? That says a lot about him, though, that he's like right. over the songs. It's, no, you, it's him, right. it's his presence. And your little his, video you, know? you made with all these people, it was they couldn't name a song, and you started, even when they knew, knew a song, Leif Shalit, right. you're like, great. Leif Shalit, Leif Shalit, Go ahead, next, <laughs> next word, give well, us a line. the Hebrew, it's not like from a Pasuk, they're not familiar no, but here, with the Hebrew. But here's the amazing but, thing. And the, and the tickets were cheap, so the fact that they right. still came, right. they did not know, right. the, it's, it's actually right. the amazing thing about him and again it's not about you it's his bands because it's all in their team like we can't again we right. can't know that is is that even though people can't name a song and they don't know the words right but they're still so moved by it that they right. wanted to how be you, there how, and there's a, that? how about this and we're gonna again we're gonna weave all this into this episode so we're yeah. gonna show some clips from it when he would sing and he'd pause you know my mother jokes that you should have has the easiest concerts in the world because he doesn't sing a whole song all throughout his songs it's, he pauses it, right? and then the audience um, sings the right. other and the, you was, sing when he would Hashem pause, Yachad, you know? you know, when he would saw his pause, the whole place was so loud that right. so they didn't really know the words, kind of bluffing the words, right. but bluffing it close enough that it's still speaking. The, My favorite part was when he, they played the first two notes of the song, literally, dun, dun, and then right. everyone's everyone got crazy. But it was, it was, First two notes and but, but but you know it's amazing think about that would you go and think about any concert you've ever been to yeah would you go to the, you don't know one you don't know one word right you don't know one song you're still connected. and there are thousands yeah. of people yeah. that you can't do that right. it doesn't exist right. anywhere it's yeah. also the experience we never right but would, be no experience. no no we've we've done concerts where for an experience, you didn't get that same experience. This no, no, one, this, this was also, a different. You know, again, and, and right? it's, when we talk about his team and they know each other, they work together. The lighting, they it, the lighting knew exactly yeah. when make it dark and just oh, spotlight yeah. him. Yeah. Spotlight on here on the on the kanun. Spotlight, bring up the lights on the audience because everyone's about to sing along. Right. It was it was just sure. all of it. But also just the energy. The and I just just so you also with his, I give you an example from the drummer because he's a decal. He's an amazing drummer. Most drummers, you play with two sticks. That's it. That's that's your instrument, and you'll play, and you'll your nice rock beat, right? Your Rebitsons of drummer. She knows this lefty drummer. She knows how to play. Within the same song, he could use four different instruments on his drums or four different right. methods. Yeah, he he plays with drumsticks. Himself. He'll play with number five, right? Yeah. Percussions. He'll play with brushes. He'll play with mallets. He'll use his hands. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he, so it just adds to the to the richness of every song. It's you can't, you can't. I it's think amazing. what comes across also again, you know, from from those who are religious, those that are ballet chuva, those who are born religious, they're all putting their soul. In, like when you spend time, yeah. with them, you talk yeah. to them, yeah. and you have a meal with them, or you hung out on Saturday night, or their their neshama, their, their soul is into this. Like they're they're musicians, they care. It's spiritual for them. Shacham, the bass guitarist, you know, who became you now he's now he's chabad, and all he wanted was like the them were he was like annoyed if he was like the whole Friday night. Shabbos me was like, ah, but that's a, that's our Torah. Like tell me something, yeah. you know, our Torah, and and Amit was like going to do it I need to where can I go do it and, right. and they're all they're just they're, they're real people in their soul they're real people right. they each have a story yeah. we're going to share with you right now just a short interview between the concerts just sitting in the office we were hanging out here and we just like spontaneously let's just have a little conversation a mere story and a meat story but they all have a story Shacham and Dekel and each one of them they're they're all wonderful and Yishai's story Shabbos afternoon we talked about he was eight years old when his family met Aliyah from France he immersed himself instead of being part of the French community. A lot of times, the Anglo community, the French community, he wanted to be Israeli, so he learned Hebrew and immersed himself in it. Right. And even though he grew up in more of a actually Haredi background and went to a Haredi yeshiva, in fact, a friend of his from childhood came for Shabbos too and was at our house. A wonderful, wonderful guy and his brother. 
Yonatan, who just came out of five months fighting in Gaza, a real Gibor, yeah, real heroes. hero. Yishai, the band, are amazing. But this Yonatan, we tried to elevate him over Shabbos. No one knows his name. He's not famous. He doesn't have 27 million views on YouTube of his song. But but he just came out of five months fighting in Gaza. These are the real, real, real heroes, real heroes. So, But Yishai comes from more of a, of a Haredi background, but he lived in an integrated Yishai. He was sharing all of this you know, about it. And that's also in his music and where it comes from and what he's trying to communicate and how it's his, his shlichut. And his Torah learning. And his Torah and his family. Mm-hmm. And his father takes a bus in every week. There's a right. with him in Yerushalayim. And his the way he talks about simple. his wife and about how right. she allows all this and she's so supportive. It's amazing. And yeah. also how you asked uh, at the beginning of the concert, anyone have family in Israel that's fighting, please rise, please stand up. Yeah. And you saw everyone cheer for them. And yeah, yeah, we honored them. Everybody. Parents you know? and grandparents of soldiers right. stand, anyone well, who's in the Israel. Right. That's another stand. point, though, when you say like people don't even know the songs. But I think everyone wants to feel a connection to Israel. There's a band that came straight Maybe from that's Israel, part of it, right? You know, represents right. Israel, is on the front lines of trying to really Pus bring morale. Simcha. Yeah. And, right? Ah, so you want to you want to have a connection to that. So if right. for no other reason... <laughs> It was yeah. an ama- it was a rally was for Israel for for being Jewish. It was pride. His new was song. What's pride. a new song from just a couple weeks ago? Oh, beautiful song. Shuv uh, Shuv uh, Prachim Prachim. Yeah. Shuv- yeah, by the way, we're guilty. You can ask your video, but his new, his something new... about the flowers will yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, we asked him, <laughs> so we asked him also on, on Shabbos song. afternoon, "What do you hope is going to be parech? What do you hope is going to be blossom?" All oh, right, right. And he describes so beautifully. There's so many tears since October seventh, but instead of those tears being squandered or wasted, we hope those tears are going to water the ground and blossom this unity, this love. And he said he wants to put the dagesh. He wants to put the emphasis on since October seventh, the moments. Of unity and of giving and of caring instead of these now these forces that are trying to divide us and mm-hmm. separate us again and we have to overcome that and there's there's just a real neshama in that um you know highlight highlight for me personally was and he mentioned something about tennis i said you want to play so he <laughs> be like, like a little trash talking like a rabbi a rabbi yeah right. sure we'll play so we played on sunday and let's just say baruch hashem nitzachti and uh a little, little bit no no but I, this is <laughs> I'm just saying the rabbi just wears like a, a uh, dry fit shirt to play. He had a special tennis dry fit shirt with his tits. You know how he's got his like, he loves those got his tzitzis, special yeah. tits on the corner he of the shirt thing. those tits. That designed, was a yeah. fun yeah. fact that he, had one, he had one just for tennis. He had one just for wow. tennis. Wow. So anyway, he wants a rematch. Maybe, maybe we'll see. But it was it was absolutely incredible. These guys have amazing. incredible stories. It was so cute. After the weekend on Monday, Shai says to me, "I really miss the guys. <laughs> <laughs> I really miss you, Shai yeah. Bo, and the guys. You know, like you, we felt connected. It was a beautiful weekend. It, it was, was a whole experience. Everyone should have it. Go experience these concerts, like you said so well. There, there's a religious experience to it, mm-hmm. right? Say the Havoda, what that's done for our oh, our young Kipper, yeah. and and they're they're not just they're not songs. They're modern pew Tim. They're like poems, and they're really. They're moving, and we're we're just very blessed. We're incredibly, incredibly blessed to have these opportunities. I pinch myself every day, every day. I pinch myself that we are in this community, in this position in life, that we have these opportunities. We don't take them for granted. It's it's a bracha, a blessing. Hashem gives us our community, the amazing people in this community that that have the merit and the schus that create these opportunities for us, and we're just That's unbelievably true. blessed. The raffle winner was there, Anita. We're gonna share a meet her. Yeah, you're gonna see Anita. the video. Okay, now one second. You guys are, you guys flew, you are the raffle winners? She's the raffle winner. You are the raffle winner. And this is her grandson and his power. One second. So you are the raffle winner. Anita from? From New York. <laughs> New York. Came all the way to the concert. You guys love Yishai Rebo? Oh, love yeah. Yishai Rebo. Yeah. Love him. Okay, go ahead. What song? July 3rd. Getting married July 3rd. What song are you hoping to hear tonight? Definitely Sibata Sibo. She got it. How about you? You came all the way from New York. What song are you hoping to hear tonight? Well, I'm actually a snowbird. Okay, a snowbird. That's a good answer. Actually. We did a raffle with the global community. We have, we have a thousand members to BRS local, and we have a thousand members of our global community who contributed to our recent global campaign, allowed us to, to blow past our, our, uh, our goal. And uh, we said, if you gave $180 or more to the global campaign, you were in a raffle, two domestic tickets to Boca, a great weekend, and VIP tickets to Yishai Rebo. Anita won. And who came? Who'd she bring with her? Her grandchildren. Her grandchildren. There's a simcha there as well. You'll hear about yeah. it on the video. Yeah. So we were excited yeah. to be able to, to make good on that promise, on that raffle, to welcome Front Anita. row seats. Front row. Front row seats, which was really great. And it was amazing. You know, we had, what another thing with the concert is it brought together South Florida. 
people yeah. from Miami, Miami. Oh, Lord, Adele, Holly, concert, Boca, especially you know, and, and, and they were yeah. they were they were big yeah. pro Israel families and, and yeah. names and from all and, over. And it brought it everyone saw really Boca, they saw our right. community. Yeah, and community. waving flags and feeling connected yes. and feeling like this. It wasn't just a concert, just the beginning. Energized more crowd for Israel. It was really special. So we're excited to bring some of it to you right now. From a little interview with Anita to some of the faces in the crowd to a conversation with Yishai and with Amit and Amir and uh, to bring to you some of the snippets of the concert itself and some of the highlights of that moment. And if you stayed with us until now, <laughs> God bless you. I feel like you were there. Yeah, so it's nice. we, we're, again, we're not flexing. We're not showing off. We're trying to include you. We're trying to include you. We're trying to share <laughs> our excitement. Exactly. What was an amazing, amazing weekend. And bless you that you should have these experiences and things that excite you. And thank Hashem for giving us these opportunities that we don't take for granted that are really, really extraordinary. So thank you for being part of this journey and enjoy these conversations and this music. Get lost in this magic, not only of Yishai Rebo, but of his entire band. Okay, we are here in between the shows, the first show. Hofari Shonaya, Mamash, Iver. Unbelievable, it was incredible. Esser, more. Uh, what a show. Getting ready for the second show. No? We got Amir's birthday today, 30th birthday Amir, plays a special instrument, not only 10 people in all of Israel maybe play it professionally, and Amir is the best of all of them, what an incredible instrument. When he said happy birthday, he said that you make all the music, it's unbelievable and it should spread. Thousands of people. And and they could find you on, on uh, Apple Music now, everywhere. I mean, he's putting out his own music, instrumental, for the whole world to hear. When did you start playing? When did I start playing? In the age of 10 years old, I started playing. I started playing on the Canon, but before I started playing, I started playing the classic piano. אצל מורה, 12 שנה, ולפני זה היה לי טוב ביד והייתי מתופף. מגיל ארבע. From four years old already playing, and then the קנון? קינון, קנון. The קנון, which is an incredible instrument, that those instrumentals are absolutely incredible. And you used to play for other bands, and מה קרה? What happened? אז לפני שחזרתי בתשובה הייתי מנגן עם... עם זמר אחד בארץ מאוד מפורסם, ולאט לאט היה תהליך כזה שהתחזקנו קצת והתקרבנו לקדוש ברוך הוא, והייתי בצבא באותו זמן, והיה הרבה הופעות בשבת, ולא יכלתי גם להופיע בשבת, והצבא קצת ככה, החסרתי הרבה, ונאלצתי לעזוב את הלהקה הזאת, וככה לא ידעתי מה לעשות, רק הקדוש ברוך הוא שיתן. אמר שנייה שנייה, אמיר היה בארמי, הוא היה פלאנג פור אביון פרמס מוזיקן, הוא לא רלוגי עד הזמן, והוא רצה להם לפלאנג על שבת, ואז הוא נהיה יותר רלוגי, הוא לא רוצה לפלאנג על שבת. אז הוא נהיה פלאנג על שבת, והוא לא ידע מה יהיה, אז הוא נהיה ונהיה את השם. כן, התמדדתי לקדוש ברוך הוא שימצא לי איזה מישהו שאני אוכל לנגן איתו, ככה שזמר כשר ומוזיקה, ככה שאני אוכל גם להתחבר אליה מבחינה מקצועית וגם מבחינה רוחנית, שאני אוכל להתחבר אליה. וככה איכשהו מצאת, פתאום אני רואה איזה סרטון ביוטיוב, נכנסתי אליו וראיתי את אישה בשיר תוכו רצוף ארבע. יותר על זה אבל, יותר על זה. זה היה לפני עשר שנים, כמעט עשר שנים. עוד כמה זה. אז שלחתי לו הודעה במסנג'ר ואמרתי לו שמאוד אהבתי את השיר שלו והייתי שמח לנגן איתו. ומסתבר שהוא הכיר אותי גם מהופעות עם הזמר הקודם, והוא אהב אותי. Amir was on YouTube randomly pressed and, and heard this new singer come out 10 years ago. was unbelievable, was blown away by it. And uh, he reached out to him and it turns out that Yishai had heard of Amir as well. And they connected and Hashem answered the tefillah that he became religious. He said, help me find a musician I could play with and play for who has emuna and who keeps Shabbat and who puts out incredible, beautiful music. And, uh, and they were able to uh, connect in that way. <laughs> ולא יודע למה, אני, משהו שם תפס אותי בו, ואמרתי, הבן אדם הזה יגיע כל כך רחוק, וברוך השם, וואו. אנחנו פה. וואו, ברוך השם. אז זה יום הולדת שלך, שלושים, יום הולדת שמח, תן לנו ברכה, תן לי ישי, תן לנו ברכה. אני מברך אתכם, קטונתי, אבל אני מברך אתכם שבעזרת השם תצליחו בכל מה שתעשו, 
שהרב תמשיך להגדיל תורה ולהאדירה, שבעזרת השם תגדל ותחזק פה ותקרב את כל היהודים, גם האלה שלא כל כך מכירים שהם יהודים, בעזרת השם הם יכירו אותך והם יגלו כמה הם יהודים, בעזרת השם. אמן. 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 Amit lives in Bat Ayin. Yeah. Amit, tell us about you. Where did you grow up? Ashdod. I was born in Ashdod at the age of 14. You went to Ashdod until 14 years old. You always had these long payouts? No, no, I was a Chiloni to Mahadrin. A Chiloni to Mahadrin. Not religious in Thailand. What happened? נסעתי, תראה, זה סיפור ארוך, כן? יש לנו זמן עד הפעם הבאה. אין בעיה. תראה, זה התגלה אליי איזה מלאך כזה ש... סתם. נסעתי לרבי נחמן, בוא נתחיל מהרגע שזה התחיל ממש לזוז. נסעתי לרבנו הקדוש רבי נחמן מברסלב, נסעתי אליו באומן ראש השנה, וזהו, ואז חטפתי שוק. ומאז זה הידרדר. רבי נחמן. אז הכל מרבי נחמן. הכל מרבנו, כן, רבי נחמן. ועכשיו, גר בבת עין. So it all began by going, he wasn't always religious, it was non-religious למהדרין, to the extreme. And it became religious through רבי נחמן, brought him back. How did you connect with Yishai? האמת היא שהוא פנה אליי, העבודה שלי בין היתר זה להיות נגן הקלטות. והוא פנה אליי להקליט לו באיזה שיר, ולא סבלתי אותו מההתחלה. לא אמריקן איידול, הייתי בכוכב נולד בישראל, הייתי נגן שם. נכון, ועוד כל מיני אומנים. אתה שואל בעצם איך התחלתי לשמור שבת? כן. הבנתי. אז זה היה סיפור ארוך, כי בעצם רציתי לשמור שבת, אבל מאוד פחדתי מעניינים של פרנסה, שאנשים שעבדתי איתם הם עבדו בשבת, ועוד לא הייתי ממש דתי, הייתי מניח תפילין, הייתי הכל וזה, אבל שבתות היה לי קשה. ובסופו של דבר התפעלתי על זה הרבה ממש. זאת אומרת, ביקשתי מהשם ש... יצרתי הצהרת כוונות, אמרתי לו, אני רוצה לרצות לשמור שבת. תעזור לי. I want to want to keep שבת. I'm not religious, but I want to want to keep שבת. כי לא הצלחתי, כי זה לא קרה במציאות, הוא לא סיבב את זה. זה כל הזמן המשיכו לקרוא לי להופעות בשבת. אמרתי לו. אז הבנתי שאני צריך לבקש את זה מהשם, אז ביקשתי את זה מהשם, ביקשתי את זה מהשם, ואז השם גם נתן לי עזות וקדושה. והתקשרתי לכל אלה שעבדתי איתם, ואמרתי להם... Kept davening to Hashem, give me the courage, give me the ability, open the pathway to keep Shabbat. And then he had a little bit of holy courage, and he called the boss at the Israeli American Idol elsewhere, and he said, I'm not coming on Shabbat. I'm not coming on Shabbat. ולא לכוכב נולד, וגם לא ל... הייתי מגן עם עוד איזה זמרת מאוד מצליחה. אז הזמרת מצליחה אמרה לי, תארגן לי גוי של שבת, בימי חול אני רוצה אותך. ובכוכב נולד הייתי צריך לעזוב. זהו, ועזבתי, והשם מאז רק פרנס אותי הרבה יותר טוב. וכמו אמיר, זאת הייתה התפילה שלי, כי אמרתי, גם אם אני אפסיק לעבוד בשבת, איפה אני אמצא עבודה כשרה, שמתעסקת בתכנים של השם, משהו, משהו של קדושה, כאילו. אני לא כזה, מה, נגן חתונות, אני לא מספיק טוב. אז כאילו... What do I do if I quit my job? I'm not going to get all the gigs. How do I make a parnasa? I used to dive into Hashem. Help me find someone that I can play with, a musical person. אז ישי, אתה התשובה מהשם. ואמיר ועמית, מה אתה חושב על זה? מה אני, זה... זה דברים שאפילו התפללתי, אבל השם שלח לי מלאכים כאלה שבכלל לא ידעתי ש... שזה יכול להיות, אתה מבין? ברוך השם. שזה באמת מתנה, ואפילו אני שומע את זה, אני מתרגש, ואנחנו עוברים מסע ביחד, ואני מתחזק מהם כל הזמן, גם מעמית וגם מעמית. ברוך השם. כמו... כמו המלאכים. אז היום האחרון ב... ימיני מיכאל, משמאלי גבריאל. ברוך השם. מלאכים, מלאכים ממש. היום האחרון, יום האחרון של הסיור פה. כן. ומחר חוזרים לארץ. אז מה המסר של היהודים בחוץ לארץ פה בבוקר הטון? מה המסר לנו בזמן הזה דווקא? לכם דווקא? לכם, לנו, כן. אני חושב ש... להמשיך עם אהבת ישראל, להרבות בה. זה, זה משפיע לא רק פה, זה משפיע על כל, אני חושב, ה, ה, היהודים מחוברים, בין אם רוצים ובין אם לא רוצים, ויש לכם פה תפקיד מאוד חשוב, וכמו שאמרת לי מקודם, אם היו רוצים הייתי לוקח כן, את, כן. ה, את כולם, אתמול כבר, ועולה איתם לארץ, ואני חושב שה, 
התפיסה הזאת והרצון הזה, זה כבר מביא את הריח של ארץ ישראל לפה ואת ה... את הקרבה, ו... וגם אני חושב שהתקופה הזאת גילתה כמה שאנחנו קשורים ומחוברים, לא יהודים שבגלות ויהודים שבארץ ישראל, כולם אחד, והתפקיד שלכם חשוב, התפקיד שלנו חשוב, אבל צריך קונקט כל הזמן ביחד, שיהיה סנכרון בין, בינינו, וככה בעזרת השם ננצח, ננצח את הסטרה אחרא, את כל מי שרוצה לעשות פירוד ומחלוקת. האהבה והדברים שאנחנו ראינו פה, זה חזק פי אלף מכל הפירוד הזה. The unity that we have all together, the Jews of Chutz Laret and Eretz Yisrael and our community and yours, can defeat all of our enemies. זה מה שאני כאילו, היום הרגשנו במסע הזה, היינו גם בפנמה, גם מאוד התחברנו והתרגשנו מהאנשים. ותמיד היה לי איזה רתיעה מחוץ לארץ. זאת אומרת, מצד אחד, תמיד הייתי אומר, אם אנחנו באים, זה בשביל להגיד להם לבוא לארץ. <אח> היום אני חושב שיש <coughs> פה תפקיד, יש פה תפקיד שהוא חשוב כדי גם מפה להשפיע על ארץ ישראל, וארץ ישראל משפיעה על פה. זאת אומרת, ראיתי ממש את הכאיש אחד בלב אחד, וכל אחד במקום שהשם שם אותו. אנחנו לא יודעים מי צריך להיות איפה וזה, ודאי שצריך להיות רצון ו- וכיסופים לארץ, כי בארץ ישראל זה באמת uh, משהו מיוחד, אבל אי אפשר לשכוח ולהתעלם. מכל האחים שלנו והאחיות שלנו שנמצאים פה ו- והם צריכים אנשים כמו הרב ואנשים ש- שיש להם לב, לב לתת ולהעניק תורה ומצוות ושבת ו- וזה דבר עוצמתי וחשוב ואנחנו שמחים שראינו את זה. <אז> אנחנו מאוד מאוד מודים מעומק ליבנו שבתם שהיה שבת ביחד, ששחקנו טניס ביחד. טוב, והרב מוזמן לירושלים לשחק טניס. בירושלים, בירושלים. תן לך עוד פעם. תודה, תודה שבאתם. Thank you so much for being here. We really fell in love with the whole band, the whole Zevet. And Bezrat Hashem, next time. Maybe we'll go to Madison Square Garden. We'll continue. Maybe we'll continue it next time. So thank you. And thank you, Eli. Let's talk to Eli for one second. Eli Katz put this whole thing together. Rabbi, take Eli. How did the two of you put this all together? Ellie, how did the two of us put this all together? So to be honest, this has been a labor of love, and I have to give a tremendous amount of thank you to Rabbi Moskowitz because uh, um, we've been working on this for at least two years, talking about this, and Baruch Hashem, it came to be as far as how the, everything aligned quite well together, but it's not so simple, and it takes a certain partner and a certain person who's got the wherewithal and uh, the intuitiveness to be able to deal with all the different logistics that come with going to being at a concert like this. So I can't thank Rabbi Moskowitz. It's enough, and the whole team here at uh, Boko Raton Synagogue. And it's a schos to be here. Thank God we're having a great time. Well, Thanks I just want to say it's a schos to have all of you. It's a schos to have you, Eli. It was such an amazing experience, and we're just getting started. And uh, Bezrat Hashem, next time in Eretz Yisrael. Look forward to it. I'm Efraim. Djokovic Goldberg. I played with him tennis. He was like a man of the land. He got me like this. He got me like this. אבל לא נורא, אנחנו עוד נחזור. רבי, תודה רבה, זכיתם לרב יקר ולאנשים מתוקים, באמת, באמת. אתמול גם ילכו אותנו. וכולם יש להם לב גדול מאוד, באמת, תודה רבה. אז בואו נשאיר עוד פזמון, אחד כולם. השם יתברך על כל יום וכל לילה. שבלא מסים ניסי ניסים עוברים עלינו, או פשוט מתרגלים עליהם, אבל לצאת החוצה לראות את השמיים האלה, את הדשא הקצוץ הזה, זה צריך להגיד תודה, מזמור לתודה כל יום הזה. לא מובן מאליו, אז זה הולך ככה. מה עשו לה? שכל השכול והכאב וכל הדמעות לא ישובו ריקם, אלא יצמח מזה עולם חדש, עולם מתוקן יותר, שהכין את עצמו לגאולה בעזרת השם. ושנזכה, שנזכה בעזרת השם בקרוב, ויגאל.
כל מה שעברנו, בדרך גם Thank you for watching Behind the Bima. Catch us next time for another peek Behind the Bima.